Hey, this is Learn Algebra Faster, and in this video we are going to talk about how to make a bar graph. So when we're making a bar graph, we want to focus on four key parts of a graph. Every single bar graph should have these four key points, and once we master them, we will be able to make a bar graph from any amount of data, and we'll even do an example later on in the video. So starting out, this is important for every, every graph, but definitely for a bar graph, key part number one is the title so you want to know what a bar graph is about and you should see that near the top so for this for this bar graph example um, we will talk about the number of wins in a season okay so we're talking about talking about a team and we're going to count how many how many number of wins they have in a given season okay so title should usually come at the top of the bar graph so that's a good place to look for it so that's the first key part then the second key part is the vertical axis now the vertical axis is this one right here that's going straight up and down and it's important here because this is where you will be labeling the numbers or the scale of of what what you're actually measuring so the vertical axis will have numbers graduated from from some minimum number all the way up to some maximum number and it'll change from graph to graph so in this case we will do 5, 10, 15, and 20, but this could easily be, could be 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, or 4,000. It, it literally could be anything, so just keep that in mind. That's one good thing about bar graphs is that they're not only used for small numbers. They can be used for large numbers, too. So we will label... We will label this area as key part number two. Now, key part number three, once you've done the vertical axis, there's another axis on here that we need to label, and that would be the horizontal axis. And that is this axis here that's going from left to right. So that's key part number three. So in this case, we will, we will talk about the number of wins in a season, so we will label the teams, team A, B, C, and D. And actually, we'll do an example and we'll give, we'll give specific team names. But the horizontal axis is usually where you show the grouping or the groups of what you're actually measuring. So whereas vertical axis is the number or or quantity that's the vertical axis and what it measures and the horizontal axis measures the groups and then fourth and final this one is not so important in single bar graphs but definitely important in 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 double and triple bar graphs is the key and that will be a little area sometimes it's at the top sometimes it's on the side sometimes it's in the middle um, this is a place where we will label what we're actually what we're actually measuring so in this case we will choose we'll choose one color for year one and maybe we'll choose another color for year two so this is just an example. This is showing key area number four of a given bar graph. So you can easily identify and easily make a bar graph if you know these four key parts of information. So let's go ahead and let's actually do an example where we talk about the title, the vertical axis, the horizontal axis, and the key and let's take real data and actually make a bar graph using these numbers okay 
So we can take, we can make a bar graph um, from data in a table. We could look it up. We could do a survey. We could count things ourselves. In this case, we're going to actually make a bar graph from this table right here. So this table of information should give us everything that we need to make into a bar graph. So remember item number one is the title and this is this is labeled this is labeled pretty well for us. So it is the number of wins in a season. Okay. Now we need to, so that's the title. Then the second thing is the vertical axis, and this is where we're going to measure the quantity. Okay, so now let's look at the table quickly, and let's try to find some minimum and maximum numbers here. So the vertical axis will depend, you know, every, every graph will be the, will be unique, but we want to make sure that our, that our maximum number up here is higher than any number in the table and we want to make sure that our minimum number is lower than any number in the table. Okay, so our highest number here is 15. So we want to make sure that at the very least we have a 15 up here. And in this case, I'm actually going to, just because we, we have the graph paper laid out easily, um, I'm actually going to measure these as 0, 5, 10, 15 and 20 and even though I know that 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 no number or no team has 20 wins I'm going to actually use the exact marks on the graph paper just to just to represent one okay so now that we've labeled the vertical axis we need to come and measure the horizontal axis and that's where we said that you measure the groups so in this case our groups are our teams so we will label the horizontal axis with the four team names. Okay, another cool thing about bar graphs is that if you had switched these, it still won't change the outcome of the bar graph. As long as you put the right quantity with the right team, you could put the grouping in any order and it wouldn't really matter. Okay, now let's look for item number four, which is the key. And the key is going to show us what colors of bars represent what type of data. So here we have two sets of data. We have year one and year two. So we need to show that in the key. And I'm going to use this green color for year one, and then I'll use a different color for year two. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and let's graph the year one data. So for the Panthers, they had seven wins in year one, and year one is the green color that I'm doing now, so I'm going to do it first. And so we will go up to seven, and then color that in. The Bulls won three games in year one. Or sorry, the Bucks won three games in year one. The Bulls won 15. And the Penguins won 12. Okay, I cut it pretty close and drew the key really close to the to the graph. So in a perfect world, I'd probably erase that and move it out a little bit, but uh, this this will fit, so it's no big deal. Okay, so now we have all of our year one data graphed. So let's go to a different color, and let's say that blue rep represents year two, the wins in year two. So the 
like I said, you could you could you could change the way the groupings are ordered, but once you choose a grouping, you have to stay consistent. So we so we need to keep the same order. So the Panthers won eight games in year two, and we need to keep that right next to the Panthers in year one. So that bar goes right here for eight games. The Bucks won 13 games in year two. The Bulls won 10 games in year two. And the Penguins won 12 games in year two. So there you have it. So we took we took the information in this table and we just showed how to make a bar graph from that table. So again, the key points are the title, the vertical axis, the horizontal axis, and the key. And with those four parts of data, you can make any bar graph. To learn more about bar graphs, to check out some other cool instructional videos, uh, just go to our website at Learn Algebra Faster. You'll find lots more content like this. You'll find more explanations. You'll find more example problems. And you'll find more descriptions of lots of different things. Thanks, and I hope you enjoyed this video.